Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm gonna discuss a little bit more about tags, how to use them, maybe some of the best practices about them. Um, when it comes to tags, just think of a regular CRM, right? With the regular CRM, you got all your contacts and allows you to place certain tags on those contacts. So for me as a, you know, as a business, let's say I can have different tags for this person. This could be tagged as a qualified client. This tag, they got a tag for purchasing a certain product. It could be a tag of they're from a specific area, a tag of a specific company that I work with. It can be the same way with here in batch leads. By using tags, it's just allowing yourself to get more granular within your own data. So for example, if you use PropStream, you have a lot of different filtering. So I'm actually going to go over to PropStream and kind of show you a quick example of maybe ideas of what you would use tags for. So over here in PropStream, obviously if you use PropStream, you got different lists and you can do your different filtering, right? Different property characteristics, ownership info, how many years the owner has owned it, square footage. You're creating lists based off certain filtering. Well, these filtering can be used as tags within batch leads. So I'll kind of do an example. When I do my searches in PropStream, I take note of every single filtering option out there so that down the road when I need to create another list, I know not to use the same filter in the past, but to use different filtering so that I keep getting more new fresh data. So for an example, let's go with, this is a pretty simple one. It's just a vacant list. And I click here and I see my filtering. So occupancy status, it's already vacant. So that's probably gonna be my marketing list and batch leads. Property type, single family. So I can use single family as a tag. That way, if I'm searching, I can then distinguish between condos, my multifam, and my single family. So I'm gonna use those as three different tags. On market, I mean, you could probably, I'm always going off, I'm always going after off market deals, so I might not include that as a tag. Um, but years of ownership, two or more, I can use that as a tag. So I will put two plus year ownership. So let's say I did this list as two to 10 plus years or two to 10 years ownership. So I'd use that as a tag. And I'm sure with another list, if I create another search of 10 or more years owned, then I'd use that as another tag. So I can distinguish between the two for future marking list and include unknown sales date. So for example, let's say I went by equity, um, estimated equity, minimum 50%. Well, I would then use that as a tag. If I'm importing this list in a batch leads, I would put 50% or more equity because let's say down the road, I had create another list of maybe 20 to 50% or 20 to 49% equity. So that way I can distinguish between my list and tags. That way, if I want to create more hotter type of list within batch leads for future marketing campaigns. Now I'll kind of come back here into batch leads and show you as an example of just to add another tag. Like I said, when you import a list, you can only add one tag. So of course you have to go back to filtering, find that list, and then add more tags to it. So I recently here in my reports, I just uploaded this leans list. So I'm going to come here to filters, go to my filtering, go to list. I'm going to click on the leans and I'm going to hit apply filter. Kind of move my head back up here. Wait for it to load. Hmm. Okay, so I had to pause that for a quick second. So if, let's say I, these are my now leans list. What I can do is come here to this button. See it says zero selected. I'll go select all. So this is my leans list. Come over here to action, click on action, tags, add tag. I'm gonna create a new tag. I'm gonna put SFR, single family. Boom, hit save changes. This is my leans list. So now I can click on here. If I click on this property, I come here to the bottom. I can see what list they are in. So I can see that it has a lien, but it's also in pre foreclosure. And then I can see my tags. I can see that, you know, I did pull this list for liens on two, three, but then I now see that 310, it was part of, it hit pre foreclosure. So in that month, it was in the pre foreclosures and it is a single family home with this tag. So I'll move my head there and 
sketch up. So again, tagging the way is just really to help you really just be better organized. Everybody has different strategies. I have different strategies. It depends if you have, you know, if you are buying by massive bulk, again, one tag can be county or county can be a custom filter. Um, literally it can be, you can use tags for your marketing list. So there's two ways for, you know, managing your marketing list. So like, let's say I can come in here and let's just say I just pick select visible. I pick 26 properties. Either I'm going to push it to an RVM campaign, a texting campaign or a cold calling campaign. I'm going to say this is a list. I can come over here to actions. I can either create it as a list and move it to and create a marketing list and say, Hey, March cold calling campaign. Or I can even do that as a tag March cold calling campaign or March RVM campaign. So in that way, when I do filter through my properties, if I see a tag or list attached to property where it was in a recent campaign or in a current campaign, then I know that I'm not going to pull that property for a campaign right now if it just ended in a campaign or if it's currently in a campaign. So that's why you want to use tags and lists um, kind of both back and forth. Tags can use, be used in multiple different ways. Just got to get creative. Um, what I say is really just bounce it off based off the filtering that you use and whatever data provider you use. So whatever, you know, aside from the list, what other important key features that I want to know about that specific property, I'm going to use that as a tag. So hopefully that helps you. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Um, I would definitely, you know, before you start importing, make sure you look at your data, the data, you know, like I said, the data that you're downloading, and really make sure and kind of write down like what type of tags do I want to use for my properties to keep myself organized for my marketing campaigns. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you got any value or you learned something new, go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like button. And then also there should be a subscribe button that pops up right here. You'll definitely want to hit that button too, because every single week, we're always releasing new educational content, tutorials, um, up-to-date stuff to teach you more about real estate investing strategies, marketing, tech tools, softwares, integrations, and all that great stuff to help you scale your business. And then also there should be a couple more videos right here that you should definitely watch. I mean, they're already here. You might as well watch them. If you're, if you're in a playlist of ours, playlist right there, next video right there, definitely should check out more content that we have. And if you want to, you know, do a quick shout out or ask us a question, hit it in the comment section. We're always responding and replying to everybody. So see you in the next video.